Good. All right. Um, then, uh, without further ado, my friend Gregor here is going to talk to us about why Microsoft does open source and, and what changed, because uh, 10 years ago, it certainly wasn't known for that. Gregor. Thank you. Hear me? Okay. Uh, so probably this will be the least practical presentation today, but I hope value to you. Uh, it's open source means to Microsoft to give you a history. Um, so, you know, firstly, my name is Greg Noriskin. I'm an organization like this. They use our product. And uh, we want to uh, use our browsers. Uh, or a heavy, heavy. Um, I'll actually talk to you about what APIs we use. Our entire platform. Microsoft and third party. So I'm a huge open source fan. But this morning, um, I've been working on a project the last few days. Um, I'm wiring my plants in my apartment, internet. What? Um, and I want my plants to be able to send me text messages when the plant murderer, apparently. Um, so I was literally sitting in the coffee shop this morning. It took me seven minutes to find a telegram of the, my plants. I didn't find just one API. I found like Python 1, MicroPython 1. That's this one, right? So literally, I could get everything I needed. But I just like, okay, I'm using the GPIO ID um, in VS Code. If you ever need a version of the power of open source VS Code. Um, but um, I, I was able to include. So I, I, I love open source. If you're a Python user, Get user, get all, anything I want, but under the Python power of open source. Um, so let me let me tell you about the evolution. Of course, because, you know there, there was a time when if you used the word open source in the same sentence, it would laugh and snot would come out of their nose, right? Um, that seemed to be the fiction. Um, there's definitely a dark age of open source for Microsoft, right? The the Barmer Gates years. Um, you could say the whole industry was, you know, proprietary software was like the, the, the order of the day. Differentiating yourself, your proprietary software, protecting your internal property. I'm when our source code effectively on the net um, <clears throat> because that is, that is even practice source code. Hackers and the like. Um, so I, let me tell you a bit of my history. Um, I joined Microsoft in 1998 um, and I was in Microsoft in 2007 um, and then I left for seven years, came back in 2000. Just before I left, I was actually working for the CTO of Microsoft Services. Book. How to basically take advantage of this open source thing. How to start using open source, particularly in projects. How to do it in a safe way. How to take, how to evaluate different open source types. And then jump forward, then I left myself, jump forward and I worked on a lot of open source stuff, but then jump Everything I return to Microsoft. And open source is part of our workflow. Right? Um, I'll, I'll describe some of it. Um, <laughs> but it's a, it, 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 it's a, it was a secret. It went from being afraid of it, fully embracing it. Facing it as a producer. We are, I would go so far as to say, we are now driven by open source. Sure, we have some proprietary things. Um, <clears throat> closed source, uh, but if you look at the trend, FPC direct value, something closed and effectively. 
So this is a, a brief history, you know, 2010, the Satya stands up and says Microsoft Linux. Um, I think it lost count about 30% of our, close to there, between 20 and 30% of our VMs are actually running on this. But if any of you know, there's a subsystem inside Windows 10. All different distros. So if you're an arch person, you can. Um, right now, it's just the command line, but the small work you can actually get X right now. X windows. This is recommended, but <clears throat> we have a full subsystem for this dichotomy of. I mean, it's amazing that at, at one point, and I think public forum. Um, and today it literally runs inside measure. Right? And I think this was transformative. Um, and the statement was made by Satya. I think a lot of our facts can be credited to Satya and his attitude to very inclusive person, um, uh, modern in his. Um, and that sort of started the, you know, at the turn of the deck, I think that started the push. We were playing with others. didn't see this huge adoption and huge confusion. Um, so 2014, uh, we open source.net, primary development framework. Um, and then you just see this roll of things through 2016 with Subsystem for Linux. Um, huge milestone for us was when the open source initiative um, declared the victory of open source. And what they used as the exemplar for that is the fact that we had here. How the industry at large feels about us and our contribution to open source. Uh, 2018, but it um, we kind of kept off with it. Now, one, one thing that uh, I've realized is deep face, but deep face, but it's all it posts it uh, repo in GitHub. Public. Yeah, you can download deep face code. Um, and you know, that's an example of tolerance if there ever was one. The, the platform. <clears throat> we do keep it in arm's distance, but it is our. It is our. Um, and then in 2019, this is well, is you know, we've had a proprietary browser for forever. Right? Browser wars. I might say the browser wars are still on. Um, and what we've done is we've adopted Chromium as our, as our next generation platform edge. Very shortly, you will see a release of, of Windows 10, um, an update to Windows 10 that will have paste. With all the benefits of convention, we'll add extra goodies, uh, um, primarily to work a couple of other things, um, but it tends to be under the cover. But actually, we, we have a mechanism for Internet Explorer access. So currently, Edge itself, current Edge browser, um, that, that, that code base will be phased that out. Um, you will, however, be able to actually um, instantiate what looks what, what is ostensibly Internet Explorer. So there are some legacy things. So in the enterprise Internet, we, we added extensibility to Explorer. Um, that allow you to do pretty low level things um, that why you still can install in seven. Do that and have to. Uh, so I'm also a person. Uh, <coughs> but uh, yeah, it will be there. 
and that's a size patient. Um, yeah, we have it there as a big seed. But not edge. The actual edge code. It, like, you know, edge was a rewrite. It wasn't it. Left a lot of entries. That code will ostensibly be fired. A lot of things we brought. But oh, you have to store it. No cross by default. I like it. Yes. No, I mean, we do. Uh, the question was around do we have a favorite list, uh, Linux distro? Um, no, we don't. Um, we do work very closely with Ubuntu. Um, you know, Ubuntu is, you know, if you, if you, Ubuntu is basically a very, very popular distribution. It has a great default install experience. It's like, kind of like the window can of Linux, right? I mean, if you arch or those other Linux distros, there's a little bit more. It was just like, oh, right. obviously, the first integration of the, you know, basically, the app get updates, even access. Subsequently, you've added Arch, um, at Suzy. Bunch of others we've added. Um, I wouldn't say it's a favorite, and and I think that that that, that if you embrace that ecosystem, on other favorites, their own. Some people have Tegaros. I, I love Felt, for instance. It's this weird Arch-based distribution it happens to happen. We we didn't want to go down the path of like locking ourselves to embrace the whole. Truth. Caboodle of, uh, of Linux. Uh, so we. Really depends on your ability. I, you know, I like that too. Um, I've, I've used. So, frankly, I. I I have a, as I said, Ubuntu is just the most approachable. It's like, as far as an ecosystem goes, it's literally, you, you pretty much have to do nothing. Um, you just stick the five in. And anyway, let's move on. Um, so, you know, as I said, I, I, I'm, I'm quite happy to stand up here with, with, with full integrity and say, but, but so uh, let's talk firstly about production. So if you go to open source that Microsoft, um, it basically we produced that website as a way to see all of the projects that Microsoft. Uh, we are ostensibly not the same, like we are to them, um, but we host them and we manage them, and we have lots of Microsoft employees actually working on them. Um, so right now there are one. 1,066 of the most popular ones would be something like VS Code. But there's just a ton there. It's well worth going to look at just how much stuff we open source. Right. Um, we have this uh, Microsoft Contributor License Agreement, it's our own agreement. Um, also published under a number of others, MIT um, and a couple of others. Um, but primarily, we publish under this license. Uh, I can, the very permissive license. Um, it's not one where it open source requirements flow. But um, our technology. Uh, ES Code. This big Facebook announced ES Code will be. Um, 
That's huge. Um, I feel like going back to the industry. I mean, I attend talks on Python development, development for AI, and I'm amazed. I that's always shown. IDE that's always shown. Is I think VS Code is one of our, our, our most significant successes as a free, free product. And not only that, there's No, VS Code is a huge effort. So we have as many people on VS Code as we have. Actually, it's the same organization, departmentalized. VS Code is a huge thing. We have full dedicated team, program management, designers that only work on No, uh, we, we have clear delineation of when you might use Visual and when you might use um, Visual Studio is a, a lot more like there. Um, application uh, tied to the Windows ecosystem and others, um, though obviously the, the, through our extensibility mechanism in Visual Studio, we have a lot of ex extensions similar to VS. Um, it's just, you know, VS Code runs everywhere. I mean, it even runs in the, in the browser. But, um, you know, it's tied to it's it's much more. That said, is, is that it's you know, for large scale development, enterprise development that's not so kind of open source. Um, definitely. But um, we're, we're investing in both platforms. We are trying to create a situation where code modifications will work in environments. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yes, dedicated team for you. The other things that, uh, that are uh, that we produce uh, .NET, the entire .NET framework is now open source. Um, TypeScript, TypeScript, I love type. um, It brings maturity to JavaScript. Like ECMAScript, I don't know, 20 <laughs> um, at the pace that ECMAScript is going right now. Um, uh, uh, Boslin compiler chain, so, uh, compiler chain that we, back in the day we had the uh, CLI, we had this uh, of our compiler, parts for the dot and shop. Um, they were sort of dumped down. Uh, right now we did. Yeah, our compiler's written. Uh, Excel. Final code generations. There for you to see. And it's highly extensive. So if you want to add some static analysis capability, and, and you can play them with your problem. At a, my team, we had a problem with people with um, agile based delegates handlers, um, and then we were seeing that there were memory no way to un um, so we, we wrote an analyzer that basically get fine code, and if you try to check, try that code how it that code yeah, this is not don't use fire up you leak the object stays around yeah, go ahead We, we have we have future off, and I've recommended in quantum computer future off. Um, it's a programming language for computing, um, and it, the idea is that we abstract all of the dairy physics um, and give you a mechanism. Okay, let's move on. No problem. Uh, PowerShell now PowerShell is cross-platform, so if you like PowerShell instead of Bash, you can use it. And my favorite, the Windows Terminal. <laughs> um, this is a relatively new project. Uh, 
So these are all things we produce. This is just a small list of the 1,000. Um, um, okay, contribution. So internally, Microsoft encourages contribution to open source projects, not only Microsoft. If, if that is your evaluation, um, you will get rewarded for that. Right? We push people to have impact outside one of the ways we do activities which now are part, um, but also um, we have some limits, obviously, benefit Microsoft, working in 80 hour a week, that might be problematic, um, not to say that some don't. Uh, so we have this thing called the small code exception. Uh, it's a policy, and we tell you what code is. I mean, something like 10,000 lines of code, it's not. But generally, we have policies to say, look, I want you to contribute, but don't be bleeding away Microsoft IP. Right? Value has to accrue to my someone. So no, this is just about uh, uh, like the fact that we allow our proof value to Microsoft. We have a part. Um, so in 2017, I looked at these metrics. We had about uh, 1,300 employees actively contributing to about 805 repos on GitHub. That number has got get more accurate data. Um, things that we contribute to that are not ours. Um, OJS, um, obviously that's actually for all companies. Yeah. Um, Docker, Electron, a framework getting native apps in JavaScript. Uh, that's sort of um, okay, consumption. I first did the slide up. How am I going to say this? Stone. Microsoft is a huge consumer. Um, and we have a whole workflow that supports this. We have a website, we have a team, a legal team um, that owns this process. If you want to use open source, go to the website, it's drop down. It's like a drop down of like 10 um, what suggest, show it to the library. We know what license it's published under. This is the important thing. It's not about, oh, this tech is like not something we support. It's really about the license. So there are uh, understanding open source licenses. There are permissive licenses, right? Then there are these kind of strange licenses. The open source requirement flows to you. So for a long time, we were very resistant to put open source windows because some open source licenses, particularly the open source, um, if you do their open source, right, change the open source, your product has to be open. Okay. Um, so we wanted to avoid open source. Uh, okay. Um, and frankly, so in most cases, you literally you go in and you, if you want a product, and you register it under your area path. Oh, and you just say, I'm using this library. You usually get an automatic. It also is a way for us to keep. For a long time, we were resistant to use React Native because React Native had one sentence license that said, if you ever try to sue Facebook, they could force. Luckily, they took that out of the license. But I want to keep track of all of that stuff, and we have a team that does it. Um, now, if, if, if you want to use open source that is under a, a license that right, um, can have a legal team actually just look at this case. This is all super automated. There's websites, etc., etc. Um, the other cool thing we have is, is that if you use open source, um, you can go and you can register your code. For what we do is we scan the repo uh, 
book open source. Because a lot of the time, sometimes you're like, oh, you know, there's a process uh, API called Glide, and I, I just, I'll just use it. No one, you know, make very, no one's. Um, what we do is we scan the source for, um, and then automatically they meet up. I'm, I'm going to just finish it and take some questions. Um, the huge consumption. And, and as an exemplar, uh, my team, Microsoft News, I mean, we use, obviously, we use ASP.NET, C, open source. React, open source. Jax, open source. Okay. And that is our, almost our entire framework. Even some of the React components that we use, uh, the um, those are internally built by Microsoft. So, if we are, uh, depending how you look at things, between 1.7 billion, and if you count for our uh, search transfer, about a $4 billion right, at Microsoft. An open source team based all of our stuff. Yes. Uh, what else do we use in? Um, yeah, we have a, a, a. I could go on and on with the list. Um, I want to talk about Azure quickly. Um, I might run minutes over. I think Azure for us was the accelerated open source because the cloud is open, right? Most everything, and we must, right? We have templates for all kinds of open source products, from Joomla to Hadoop. There's a long list post within um, in Azure. So a lot of these are open source. Uh, we need to build this with user. We can't just give you a back box and say, here's the thing. We have to manage those things. We have to optimize the execution on the cloud. We have to make them common. Self, IaaS, Service, um, and the cloud is is a forcing. Azure for us is. I mean, I I, I did a talk I open source. I think in one month we open open source. Okay, so here's some links. Um, I, I think the key one is uh, openmicrosoft.com and openmicrosoft.com. Um, the one is a list of our project. The second one is a blog. Great blog, you can go in and for articles of different uh, technologies, uh, narrative driven. The, the top one is just like, this is the list of stuff we show inside. Um, the .NET Foundation is a third party foundation. Um, that we're part of um, is things.net. Um, well. .net has really and really is outside of Microsoft. I mean, we heavily um, contribute to it, but it is the thing that lives outside. Um, open source guideline, this is from Git. Um, if you're interested in our license, um, they're going to definitely look. Um, and then uh, this is a bit markety, but it, it, it does give you some indication of why Azure is uh, a great place to go and deploy so WordPress or Joomla or Node or HP or whatever tech you want. Um, you'll, you'll see that we've done actually interesting data point. If you look at the, 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 the skill sets that we've been hiring over the last five years. A, a person from Microsoft. Maybe like, right? We are hiring people who literally have never installed Visual Studio, never seen a line of C Sharp, and they never have even people with and then opt. Uh, uh, that I believe it. So you had a question.
Um, so I, I, I can't speak to the technical details of it. Oh, sorry, the question was how far how far do we scan when static analysis of our Git repos? Um, so we, we do do security scans um, for our repos. Um, we, we do static analysis. So we have a suite of static analysis that we run on our own repos. Okay? Um, and those things look for a bunch of different issues. Right? So these you have to run the code to see it. But we can statically verify we do. Um, and different languages have different characteristics what uh, static verify. Um, we have a pretty complex code. Generally we not reverse down to the libraries. Uh, we would make static trust decisions about those libraries. Um, we do keep track of things like zero-day vulnerabilities that show up in body um, libraries. So if there's, and there are other, there are other organizations that do, um, and we that work with, um, they just scan libraries. You, I mean, you can imagine if I could compromise React. Yeah. I could check it and put a back door in sites. And this is one of the beautiful things about open source. So I use a password, password manager I use than open source. The reason I, I use it, I've read every line of code of that password manager. And I know they are much more obsessed about security, and I'm pretty obsessed. Um, we're looking at this. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the fact that there's so many people contributing to this stuff, to open source, and because everyone's incentivized, uh, for my thing. Um, I mean, it's, it's a, it is a model for scale that I'm sure we've achieved before. Um, and all reaping the benefits. The efforts that are being done across. Um, cool. Well, thank you. So we we definitely do. So. Uh, uh, the question was, do we have dependencies on other teams open source? Absolutely. Um, we use the same change request mechanism that anyone else would be, right? So basically, um, we can either contact the team and ask them to make a change. The beauty is, is that if we want the change, we could just do a pull request. But a lot of the time, that's how it works. If Need something done that's not going to touching some deep part of the code. Pull request. Submit it. I check my cook, you know, check my PR. Oh, okay. but, um, it really depends on so we try the channel, the same channel as other others. Not always true, obviously. Exchange. Um, and uh, um, but on the whole, we try we try to use the open source. Talk. Want to be prioritized against just inter. Yes. Oh. Okay.